Howdy friends, it's Kathy from Rust Paper Scissors. This is like my third attempt to make this tutorial. Uh, so I'm getting a little crazy. <laughs> um, what I wanted to make today was uh, a junk journal from an altered book. And uh, this is what we're going to be making and I'll show you how easy it is to make. Um, I took an old book and I just covered it with sticky backed velvet. And uh, that's what we're gonna do with this book. And uh, we're going to add a signature, and uh, I'm going to demonstrate just some of the things that I do. I wanted to say that there are a lot of wonderful um, YouTubers out there who have tremendous content on making junk journals, on making signatures, sewing signatures, that type of thing. So I did a lot of prep work, so I won't be showing you a lot of those steps. I'm going to show you what uh, I do and uh, what I use. And the, the main thing I wanted to uh, talk about is a sticky backed velvet. I love this. I just did a, a uh, tutorial on how I make the little tiny mini journals with the sticky backed velvet. And then I wanted to do one where uh, I show how I make, a, you know, an altered book uh, journal. So what I do is um, when you take the text block out. I was told that if you take those measurements of the text block uh, and you make your, your signature that size, then your signatures will fit in the book. So I thought that was a good tip. So what I like to do is um, I'll take um, some tie-back tape and I'm going to um, tape down the center and um, Let's see if I can get the tape up. And this spine is about two inches, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make two uh, pieces of tape. I'm gonna put two pieces of tape. I usually go to about the edge of the where that paper is on the book, but it doesn't really matter because all this is going to be covered up with um, the sticky-backed velvet. And then I'm gonna, I'm trying to cut this stuff right here next to my camera and I don't want to knock the camera so if it's always not in frame I apologize uh, like I say this is my only my second tutorial so I'm still kind of nervous and um, I would appreciate uh, your comments and uh, if you like the video if you'd hit the like button if you uh, would like to subscribe I would love that I'm trying to grow my channel and I would uh, always appreciate new subscribers and um, if I get this off, we'll get going. Uh, sometimes this tape can be tricky. All right, here we go. And I'm just gonna put this on the other side. Oh man, always technical difficulties when you're filming, huh? And then let's see if we can turn it here. Y'all are probably laughing. I wouldn't blame you. I would probably laugh if I saw me too. Okay, so that strengthens the cover or the spine. And then we're gonna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the sticky backed velvet on here and that will also strengthen the spine. Then we're gonna sew the signatures directly to the book. It's not a hidden spine, um, but what we do is we sew the signatures in, then I cover this part with sticky backed velvet also. And I'll show you, it's really easy. It goes really fast. Um, once we get going, um, I um, what you have to do is just release this uh, paper, and that's the hardest part is getting this loose. I've already cut it down to uh, the book is about eight and a quarter. I cut this to about nine inches, so uh, it would be a little easier to work with, and then I wouldn't waste as much because I like to save it and use it. I use it on tags and all sorts of different things. Um, I'm going to place this close to the other side uh, of the book because uh, you're not going to see it, but the uh, where the velvet overlaps, there'll be a little uh, line, but it's very, really invisible. But again, that just, uh, it just disguises it. Then I'm going to pull some of this paper and what I like to do is like hold it and pull just a little bit and then I 
uh, burnish it down with my hands and then I pull a little bit more and that just keeps it really um, not from getting a air bubble or a wrinkle and then uh, that side is done and then uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to go on and trim it and then um, we will do the other side and I just want you to see how if you didn't see my other video on uh, the velvet, this will show you uh, how easy it is. This is a little uh, finger blade. A, a lot of people talked about this in my last video. It's a Fisker's uh, item, and I just go along the edge of the book. I don't use a ruler. I just use the edge of the book, and um, this stuff really usually cuts very well. I may have to turn it around and do this side. Sometimes that first side is just a little harder to get off. There we go. There we go. See how easy it just cuts so easy. Uh, you can cut it with your um, Cricut machine. Cut it with scissors. I use this uh, utility knife. Uh, but there's all sorts of ways to, to cut it, and it usually cuts like a dream. But it's giving me a little fit right here. And like I say, normally I would save that and use that for something, maybe strengthening a, a page. Now this one is going to be uh, a little bit harder to trim because I got it a little close to the edge, but we'll get there. I'm going to just come along. And like I say, this stuff cuts so well. You just get your knife in there and go along the edge and it's done. And so, uh, so if you like fabric on your journals and um, I love velvet, I, a little black dress, oh, a little black velvet dress, oh, I love it. So that's the inside, that's one side. Now we'll do the other side. I'm trying to keep my top here. That's the front cover, so this will be the back. And I don't know if I'll remember that, but I'll try. And then we're going to uh, do this side. And once again, you're re doing that release paper. And um, I just, um, that and then uh, what I'm going to do I'm kind of doing this so I can see um, oh I did the wrong okay I did the, <laughs> I'm going to do the other side so I'll have more to trim off it'll be easier so we'll just not everything's perfect especially where I'm concerned uh, Sometimes I'm a nitwit moron. That's what we used to say when I worked. Uh, let's see. Now I'm going over the, uh, if you can see, here's the edge. I'm going to go over it just a little. And uh, so, but that seam will be very, will not be noticeable when we, um, excuse me. Uh, see, it's, it's hardly noticeable now uh, when we get the signature in. Okay, so we'll pull that off, and then we will flip it over, and we'll uh, trim it, and we'll have the inside done. And what is it, eight minutes? Uh, I think that's pretty good for a, um, a journal, the inside of a journal. Ends always get me just a little bit. It's hard to get it started. Okay. And then um, sometimes I'll start down just a little ways and start cutting. And then I'll go back and uh, cut the other side because I'm going to cut it anyway. And um, it just makes it a little bit easier to, um, well, yeah. um, cut that way. Alrighty. Then we've got to do one last uh, side here and let's start this way. 
I hope I'm in frame. I hope you can see what I'm doing. And I'm just going to start up there and use the book as a guide and trim it off. There we go. Okay. So now we have the inside. Um, I've got a little glue there, but it comes right off. Um, got the inside done. I'm going to burnish down that seam. That's where the signature is going to go. And then that's what uh, we're going to do next. And uh, I just wanted to talk about um, signatures. And um, I like to use sometimes fragile paper. And I like to use um, individual pages. And... Um, so let's talk about the, I like to use tea dyed paper. So I use a lot of times an um, composition book. And what I do is I will take some of this, um, it's called uh, wound tape. And uh, I will run it along the, where the, the signature, the spine is going to be, you know, where you're, needle and thread is going to be. So I'm just reinforcing that. So I normally put some down on the paper and then I line the paper up and then just pull it down and you're done. Uh, I only do one side of the paper because it adds a little bulk to um, your journal and you know we don't like a lot of bulk. In our journal and then I just trim this edge you could fold it over if you wanted my OCD is showing I like to cut it and um, I have some more OCD uh, confessions here in a minute this is uh, like an example of the fragile paper this was a uh, from a book that my mom had a Greg shorthand book I took shorthand in high school but this is her book from probably the 1940s and uh, again I was able to take it out as a whole page, but I want to just reinforce this center because there's already holes in there, and um, I, I just I want it to last. So again, I'm going to place down the tape just a little bit, and then I'm going to line up my page and just pull it tight and then burnish it down. And it's uh, very easy. Uh, it goes quickly. And I'm not doing a very good job of cutting. I'm trying to stay in, in frame, and I don't know how I'm doing. I don't have one of those fancy, like, overhead projectors. I just use my phone. And um, so it's, it's probably not the best quality, but um, I'm trying. And then I like to uh, fold the pages and really try and burnish that, uh, make that, edge, uh, you know, very well uh, pushed down because, you know, as journals kind of creep up, I want the edge to be, what I'm talking about is this inside, you know, I want it to be as thin as possible. Okay. And then the last thing is if you take two pages and, um, you, you have them independently. A lot of times people would just take this page and put it, you know, fold it and put it in their book like that. And that's fine. That's great. I, you know, it works for them. And uh, But me, I like to be able to read the um, words. So I like to put it in like a book page. So I'm going to put my tape down. I'm going to line up my pages as best I can. Again, here with the camera right there, it's kind of hard. And then um, I line these up. This, you know, they didn't tear out of the book just perfectly, but uh, I will put it down. And then I get them together. And then I'm gonna take that off so I can burnish it down. I got a little bubble there, and it's because I'm filming. Normally, it goes very smoothly, but what can you do when you're filming? 
And then what I do on a page like this, I would turn it over and I would put a piece of tape on this side. I'm only gonna do just a little bit of the way because I don't wanna waste it and I'm not gonna use this page because obviously I messed it up. But that's the example of making a book page out of two individual pages. And um, like I say, I use them a lot in my book and I'll show you in my journal. Uh, and then I just find the center and we go from there. Okay. So that, so now it's a book page. So that's what I'll show you here. And another thing I was talking about, sometimes I talk about um, creepage in a, a journal. As you get further into the journal, the pages don't nestle together as well, and so they stick out a little bit more. So sometimes when I have a page like that dictionary page, it's bigger than my book, but I still want to use it because it's got a lot of real estate. So I um, will you know, fold it in. And so I'll fold it over quite a bit more than normal. Uh, it's not going to exactly be flush, but it's hard to get the pages flush as you go further into the journal. But um, I think y'all all know that. And I just wanted to talk about that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video for a minute. I'm going to sew my signature into the book. And then i uh, we're gonna come back, but first, let me uh, show you one other little, um, I guess it was a, a tip. Um, I saw, and I don't know who the YouTuber was, and I apologize, but I saw somebody who was talking about, um, you know, making a template for your pages. And um, what, they did was they used um, graft paper and it really shows the lines. It helps you keep them straight. I thought that was a great tip because a lot of times I'm not real straight. And um, what I do is I just set this in there. I know that this is the top. I will clip it down with some clips and then I will uh, punch the holes in it. But I just wanted to show that to you. The graph paper was, I thought, a very great idea. And uh, I'm going to do that and get it ready, and then we'll do the cover, and we're done. Thank you. Okay, I'm back. I have uh, sewn in my signature, and I just did one on this book because it's uh, going to be a Christmas journal, and it'll probably be kind of chunky anyway. Uh, I'll probably do another uh, couple of videos about maybe the rusted embellishments that I'll use on this, and we'll probably, you know, do a couple of things together. Um, what I wanted to do now was see, I just did a five-hole pamphlet stitch, and it's just sewn into the thing, and you can barely see, you can see the seam a little bit, but I don't think anybody would really notice it. And then, so... What I did in prepping this for um, the video was I went on and cut a piece of black velvet about three and three quarters inches. The spine was two inches, and then that gives me a little hangover. And then the other thing I did was I made some measurements. Sometimes when um, you use the sticky back velvet, um, I don't get it always even, so I cut it down, but I didn't cut it exactly even because I'll trim it. And then um, I wanted to mention that sometimes when you're working with adhesive things like stickers, uh, there's a little trick, and you may know this, but I, I found this out a while ago. Um, if you have like a sticker or the sticky backed velvet and you want a little wiggle room or a little wiggle time to... Um, be able to move it around, I will take a glue stick and I'll run a bead of glue along uh, the edge and that will give me uh, some um, time if I need to reposition it 
it just allows you to make some changes. So that's a, a great little tip because believe me, I make I have problems. So I'm just going to kind of line it up there with that um, pencil mark. And then again, I burnish it. I want to get it into that crease. So I kind of really go slow and burnish it. Sometimes I'll lift this up, make sure I'm getting it in the crease. And then I'll just continue to go across the spine. And then we get to the back and it looks like I covered up my other line pretty good so it looks like we got it pretty even and then if you close the book it looks uh, you know it's even so uh, it might not have been perfect down here I will erase a little bit of that and so maybe somebody will never know I don't know if I have my pencil here I thought I did but um, uh, I'm going to pause it for just a second go get a erase Okay, I found an eraser. If this ends up not being exactly um, flush, I will, um, or, you know, exactly straight, you can cover it up with some lace. And a lot of times I do that anyway. Just to, um, there's, there's our cover. Now let's go on and we will trim it. And then we'll do the other side and we'll be, we will be done. I'm going to find the center here and see if I can push it down and again I'm going to start kind of off to the side I'm just going to use the book as my guide and there we go there we go and then I'm filming this at night so the lighting may be really bad I apologize okay so that's that's done uh, looks like very nicely I might have to trim it up just a little bit. And then we'll do this side. And again, we will use the book as a guide and uh, cut it down. There we go. And then I have this, this edge. Oh, it looks like we have a little extra hanging over here. See if we can get it this way. Well, I'm going to use some scissors because that is not going well. Okay, I'll, I'll trim that up, but that looks pretty good. Then we're going to do the front cover and the, uh, the back cover, and we'll be done. And I think that was a pretty easy way to make a journal. Let's see if we can um, start my velvet. I thought I was being so smart. I, I uh, prepped it where it was, um, I could peel this off easily and I got the corner turned down. So I'm gonna have to see if I can use that. Might have to re glue it. Maybe that'll be on the outside. That'll, we'll put that on the outside so it won't bother us. Okay, and we're going to have quite a bit left over so we can save that. I tried to cut it uh, just a little bit longer. I might, is, yep, this is the right way. Uh, so I didn't cut it as long as I thought I did. And um, I will start with this side. So let's see if we can get over there and get to that side. It's just a matter of peeling this apart. And again, it can be a little fiddly, but it's worth it because it, to me, it's, it's easy, you know, to have a beautiful uh, fabric covered journal. I'm going to add a little bead of glue in case we need to um, have some wiggle room. And then I'm just going to butt it up next to the um, black. And then I just carefully pull the um, release sheet. Try not to get any bubbles or wrinkles. There's the edge of the book. So I'm going to turn it over. Oh, I got my, my mat caught. Okay. And now we're just going to 
trim it up. Okay, let's see. I'm going to start a little ways down. I'm going to use the book as a guide, and then we just peel it off. And really, it's easier when you're not filming. Y'all will have not the problems that I've had doing this, believe me. And then we're just going to do this edge. I'm going to start down a little ways because sometimes when you start on the edge, it catches it. But this is going to just be fine. And then I go off. And, of course, it's going to act up a little bit. But it wouldn't be, you know, a project. It wouldn't be a junk journal if you didn't uh, do it up. I'll have to trim that edge because that doesn't look very good right now. All right, so there we go. So it looks beautiful. And, um, oh, I've got to do this edge. <laughs> got ahead of myself. You can fold it over. I have folded it over and done the insides, you know, so you don't see the edge of the book. A lot of times when I make the little um, file folder journals, I'll uh, use a black file folder or um, a tan one so you don't, you don't really see the, uh, the file folder. But this we'll see, but it's Christmas and it's kind of, cream is kind of a Christmas color. I don't think it's very noticeable. I don't think it'll be too awful. If I really don't like it, I'll go back and put some red um, um, what is it? Paint or something that would cover that up, but I think I'll probably just leave it. Okay, that's that way. Okay. Again, I started my page. We'll see how well that does. Not too good because it got stuck here. Okay. And then we just pull it down. And I'm going to put a little glue on there just to help us. If we need any help. It looks like I'm going to need a lot of help. Okay. And that is... Okay, now we're going to line it up. Try and get it flush with the black so we don't see the cream underneath. We may have to put a... Um, Oh wait, I'm gonna I'm gonna reposition it a little bit. Hold on. I want more down here that I can trim off if possible. Okay, then we just pull our release paper and then this is the edge of the book. Burnish it down. We flip it over. And we're going to trim it. Okay. I'm going to move this over a little bit so I can see it. I hope I'm in frame. Okay. I'm going to go down. I'm going to go down just a little bit more. Okay. And now we're going to um, trim this edge. And again, I start a little ways in, so it's easier to cut and it doesn't pull that edge. It's a little tip. Okay, and then I turn it 
turn it around and do the other way. Okay. Now you could do this book where you didn't, you know, cover the spine and attach the book to the spine because you may not like having your signatures already in your book when you're making your cover. Uh, it's just a personal preference. Uh, I just do it this way because it's easy and um, I know what I'm going to do. Sometimes, you know, you don't know what you're going to do on a uh, journal. So um, there we go. Well, can't get the last little bit pulled apart here. All righty. And we're done. So um, let's look at it and um, see, I, I probably would work on a couple of little things, but I think it's very pretty. I think it'll be fun to use. And um, howdy y'all, I'm back. Uh, my OCD kicked in so bad last night, I couldn't even sleep. Uh, I, this is the journal that we just finished. I could not stand that um, the edges weren't uh, finished off. It just, it really bothered me. I didn't think it looked uh, professional. So I redid the cover this morning. And what I did was I um, made the front, I just redid the front. I made it a little bit longer. I wrapped it around the edge of the book and then I used that same sheet but pulled it back and I reattached it. So uh, I think it looks so much better and I wanted to, um, you know, show you that I, I fixed what, how it looked because I just thought it looked, it didn't look professional. So there you go. That's the little journal that we made. Um, I hope to come back in a couple of days and maybe do some uh, embellishing and maybe some rusted elements and uh, I hope you have a wonderful day. I appreciate your time. If you liked the video, I'd appreciate it if you hit the like button. Uh, I would love it if you were a new subscriber. And uh, I just uh, thank you very much.